Okay, welcome to part two, the derivation of the arc length of the Bakista Chroma Cycle. In part one, we derived the equations for the Bakista Chroma Cycle. So if you're unfamiliar with that, click the link below. Let's look at the Bakista Chroma once more. Okay, here is our uh, video one part one of our animation and what we got here is we have a rolling circle that's rolling along a flat plane and we're going to follow or track point a as it moves from zero to two pi okay let's see how this looks As you can see, the the wheel or the circle is rolling along to the right, and we're tracking point A as it goes from zero to two pi. Okay. So what we want to do in video part point two part two, we want to calculate the length of this red tracking curve. We want to calculate the length of that curve. Okay, let's go back to our video. Okay, here we have an XY point location diagram. And this is going to talk about our rolling circle along this flat plane. So last time we derived the x and y equations to locate point P on the rolling circle. So we have from zero, we have locate x point of P, and from zero we can locate the y point of P. From the center of the rolling circle, we have a radius r to P, point P. Now, when this circle was at zero, point P was at zero, okay? So we determine from video one that x equals r times the quantity theta minus sine theta, quantity is closed, and y equals r times the quantity one minus cosine theta, quantity closed. And the rolling circle is rolling towards the right. Now we have point P in terms of x and y. We can calculate the distance along the curve being traced. The distance formula in the rectangular form is using the Pythagorean theorem. ds, ds, the hypotenuse, is equal to dx squared plus dy squared. And ds is equal to the square root of dx squared plus dy squared. Factor out the dx term under the square root sign, and we have dx squared times 1 plus dy squared, squared divided by dx squared. And then we have dx is equal to the square root of 1 plus dy over dx squared times dx. We take the square root of dx, and we take the square root of 1 plus dy over dx squared, and then we get dx. ds is equal to the square root of 1 plus dy over dx squared times dx. Now the calculus begins. Remember our location equations in X. These are the equations we derived in video one. We need to take the derivative of those with respect to theta. The derivative of X with respect to theta well we multiply it through by R so we got R theta minus r times sine theta. So therefore, we take the derivative of both sides. We have dx with respect to 
theta dx d theta is equal to the derivative with respect to theta of r theta minus the derivative with respect to theta of r sine theta. And since r is constant, we can pull that term out. So we're just left with the derivative of theta respect to theta and the derivative of sine theta respect to theta. And that leaves us with dx d theta is equal to r minus r cosine theta because the derivative of theta respect to theta is 1. So there's our result for x. Okay. Then we have for y, we have y equals r times the quantity 1 minus cosine theta. And we multiply it through by r. We have r minus r cosine theta. And we take the derivative of both sides, and the derivative with respect to theta of r, and minus the derivative with respect to theta of r cosine theta. So the derivative with respect to r, with respect to theta of r is 0. We have minus the derivative with respect to theta of r cosine theta, which is sine minus sine theta. So a minus times a minus is a plus. And our final equation for y is changing derivative of y with respect to theta is equal to r sine theta. Let's continue. Remember this calculation a few slides previous is from our Pythagorean theorem dy of dx is equal to dy of d theta divided by dx d theta. If you invert and multiply the denominator, you get dy over dx. And dx theta, d theta, and dy d theta is what we just derived. So, let's continue. Plug in dy dx into, plug in dy dx equals dy over d theta dx d theta into this equation gives this. Now we'll simplify the previous fraction from 1 plus this gives this equation. Now square root numerator and denominator. Let's continue. Now take the square root and invert. Notice I took the square root then inverted the denominator. The dx's cancel out. You see why you need to be good in algebra. Dx, ds is equal to the square root of dx d theta squared plus dy d theta squared times d theta. Let's continue. Here's our previous equation. Let's integrate this equation. Integral of ds from 0, from ds is from 0 to s. And the integral of this quantity is from 0 to theta. But let's plug in dx d theta, dy d theta. The dx d theta is this, and dy d theta is equal to r sine theta. We plug those into here, and we would get this. Now I'll perform the squaring operation, and let's continue. Just square all of these terms and leave them under the, under the square root sign. I'm not going to do the squaring for you. So after squaring, we have this. We notice that sine squared cosine squared is equal to 1. And the square root of r is the square root of r squared is equal to r. Therefore, s is equal to r times the integral from 0 to theta of the square root of quantity 2 minus 2 cosine theta, called quantity cos d theta. Now, here is one trigonometry identity you learned in class, if you did your homework. Cosine 2u is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared u. Plug this in for cosine theta. So we plug 2u in there. But remember, 2u is equal to theta. 2u is equal to theta. So we divide by 2, and we have u is equal to theta over 2 right there. So 
rather than sine squared u, we have sine squared theta over 2. Multiplying through by 2, 2 minus 2 plus 2 is 0. We are left with r times the integral of the square root of 4 sine squared theta over 2 d theta. Let's continue our previous slide result. We can take square root of both quantities. Square root of 4 is 2. So that leaves us 2r times the integral from 0 to theta of square root of sine squared theta over 2. But sine the square root of sine squared theta over 2 is just sine theta over 2. So that leaves us with the integral of sine theta over 2. Now we substitute for u for theta over 2. Then u equals theta over 2. Then du equals d theta over 2. And we solve for d theta, we get multiplied by 2. We get 2 du equals d theta. Now we change the limits because we change from theta to u. So the limits for u is equal to theta over 2, but u equals 0, theta equals 0. 2 times 0 is 0. When u when theta is equal to 2 pi, u is equal to pi. So now our limits are 2 times r from the 0 to pi sine u 2u, 2 du. So we multiply by 2, we get 4r. The integral of sine u is equal to minus cosine u. So we have 4r minus cosine u from 0 to pi. And we have minus cosine pi minus the quantity minus cosine 0. And s is equal 4 times r. Minus times minus is a plus. So 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 times 4 is 8. S equals 8R is the arc length of the cycloid, where R is the radius of the rolling circle along the flat surface. That's it. This is the end of the abbreviation of the arc length of the cycloid. It's not magic. It's the law. Mathematics. In part three, we will do the descent time. The descend time in part three class. How long it takes to travel from A to B. I hope you learned something. See you next time.